Come along with me as I de-stash and organize my washi tape. Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and during this fall organization week over here on YouTube, I am bringing you all along and working through some organization things that need to get done in my craft studio. We're talking about organization solutions, and today we are tackling this right here. This is washi tape. This is my washi tape wall. I love my washi tape wall, but it is over flowing. And so today is a hard day because we are going to be de-stashing washi tape, going through, getting rid of the ones that I'm not going to be using, clearing out some and talking about washi tape organization and some different organization solutions that you may want to try. So if you want to come along with me and do a little washi tape clean out, let's go. All right, so honest talk here. I actually receive a lot of washi tape due to my YouTube channel. I receive a lot of washi tape from companies that I'm working with and I love, love, love receiving it. I love washi tape. It's one of the very first craft supplies that I started investing in when I got back into crafting and journaling after my kiddos were born. But I feel like washi tape is one of those supplies that just seems to multiply on its own. Even when I don't buy it, even when I don't receive it, I swear that there is just more and more washi tape that finds its way into this craft studio. And I also find it really hard. Um, it's one of those supplies that's really hard to let go of because... There are lots of different uses for washi tape. So in our heads, we're often like, oh, but I might use that at some point. Oh, I could see using that at some point. And I completely relate to that because I love the look of my washi tape wall. It has grown a lot since I've moved down here. I've added multiple shelves. It is, it is a lot of washi tape. And I can imagine using all of it, but I know in all honesty, that I won't use all of it and that some of it is going to waste. It's almost like just a display item up here instead of an actual crafting item that I use. And I think it's time to de-stash because the whole set is a little bit out of control. That being said, um, we're going to go through, I'm going to go through all the shelves. We're going to go through, we're going to clear out the ones that I'm not going to use. The question that I get asked the most is what do you do with your de-stashed supplies? Um, what do you do? People have a hard time letting go of their supplies um, and wondering about what to do with them afterwards. And it keeps us from throwing things out or from de-stashing at all. What will I do with my supplies? Well, with the washi tape, I will send some photos to friends, see if they are interested. If they are not interested, I will donate it. I will either donate it to schools if it is appropriate washi tape for schools, or I will probably donate mine to the Salvation Army because that is an easy place for me to drop things off and donate. They tend to package them up in bundles and resell them in their stores, which I find fun and exciting because I know that there will be a crafter out there that is looking through the Salvation Army and will then be able to find um, some nice supplies, some fun things to work on um, or work with. So that's what I'm going to do. Don't let the lack of knowing where uh, your supplies are going be the thing that stands in between you and de-stashing. The truth is, once you decide to de-stash, you have to stop thinking of that supply as your washi tape. It's not yours anymore. It's out there. Even if you end up throwing it away because maybe it's gone bad or maybe it's just an old washi tape and maybe you only have a few and there's just, it makes no sense to take it somewhere. It's okay to just let it go. I promise it's okay. Yes, does it represent a monetary investment for sure. But when your collections or when your supplies get so big that you actually have trouble deciding what to use, um, which is the case here. There are so many washi tapes um, that it's kind of hard to narrow down what to use and it makes it harder for me to actually use my washi tape. Um, it's okay to de-stash and let some things go. All right. You ready to make some hard decisions with me? Let's do it. All right, I'm actually going to start with my washi tape drawer sets. These are drawers that I have from Michael's 
These work really well in a craft studio because you can easily pull them out, see your washi tapes. They also stack really nicely. So this one is from Michaels. The other smaller versions I have are from Amazon that were actually meant for eyeglass cases. I will link everything down below, um, but this holds a ton, a ton of washi tape. And I have mine slightly organized by brand. Um, and I love that I can just pull out the drawers to easily grab what I am looking for. So here is some of the criteria that I'm going to use as I'm going through. First of all, have I used it already? Is this a washi tape that I've used and I grab for over and over again? Can I see myself using it? Do I see a very clear project of when and where and why I might use said washi tape. If that's the case, then it's a keeper. If none of those are the case and it's just a pretty washi and I just don't know, will I use it? I'm going to let it go. It's There's too much washi. I've got to be a little bit cutthroat here. Um, I think a lot of us are in that position. There's just, there's a ton of it. We have this with different things like stickers and with papers. And, and yes, some of these I'm going to really like, but do I see myself using it? That might not be the case. So it might be time to do a little bit of a de-stash. All right. Deep breath. Let's go through. I have actually a pretty big bucket here that I'm going to use to hold my de-stash tapes. And we're going to get going. I'm going to put you all on fast forward. Let's do it. All right. So I have an announcement to make. I think I'm in my lazy crafting era. And this is why. As I was going through these washi tapes from the washi tape shop and washi tapes and PET tapes from Rong Rong, I decided I no longer can deal with washi tape stickers or PET tapes that are not pre-cut. Some of the PET tapes from the washi tape shop do not have the pre-cut stickers. You have to cut them out yourself. I don't have time for that. I just, I don't, even if it's a gorgeous washi tape, even if it's one that I could see using, I just, I don't want to trim them out. And so I definitely de-stashed the ones that I thought um, were just a little too fussy for me to use. Now, I kept, if it was, if it was absolutely gorgeous, like there was no way to replicate that in a different way, then it, then it got kept. So then it, then it got to stay in the stash, but man, a lot of the washi tape shop stickers ended up leaving the stash just because I don't, I don't want to cut out the washi tape stickers. I'm just gonna, just gonna be honest. I want them pre-cut and ah, it felt good to kind of let go of some of those. I also would pick up a washi tape, look at it. If I couldn't see putting it in my planner, or my journal on that day. Like if I wasn't willing to go put this down in a planner right this second, then it didn't get to stay. I had to be very cutthroat on these different tapes. I did keep the travel theme ones. I kept the ones that had inspirational phrases. I kept some of the really beautiful florals that I use for layering, but otherwise it was just time to let some of these go that I've held on to for a while, but have never found their way into a journal. And I was maybe saving it for just the perfect page, but the truth was it was just kind of cluttering up my stash and it was hard to find what I was looking for, which is, I think one of the things that uh, prompts us the most to do a de-stash is that we have so much stuff. We literally cannot find what it is we want, what it is we're looking for, because we're having to sort through a bunch of extra stuff. You clear that out, you're actually going to get to enjoy the supplies that you love a bit more. So I have these acrylic shelves and then I have the acrylic drawers. The acrylic drawers are where I keep some of my specialty tapes. I do seasonal tapes and holiday tapes in there, plus black and white, because those are some of my biggest categories that I that I pull from all of the time. The seasonal tapes, I'm not pulling from at all times. Um, I kind of rotate through those during the year, um, but I did discover that my collection was growing of seasonal washi tape and I don't mind that one bit. So um, it was helpful to clear out one of these cases like I said, these smaller square cases, those are from Amazon and meant for eyeglasses and they work very well for washi tape. The larger one is from Reco uh, Recollections over at Michael's. And then these acrylic shelves, these are meant for nail polish. You might often see them in nail salons. Um, they have all different kinds of these on Amazon. They work fabulous. They take advantage of vertical space and allow you to display what I think is one of the prettiest supplies that you probably have in your craft area. And that's washi tape. It is just a beautiful supply to look at and be inspired by. 
So you can find acrylic shelves on Amazon. Just be careful of the depth that you're buying. These are at least two inches. If you get smaller than two inches, then your washi tape will not sit well on the shelves. So be careful as you are uh, looking at the different acrylic shelves. I will try to link these specific ones below. They've been coming in and out of stock. So um, just be aware of that. I have been a wrong, wrong affiliate for a while now. And that means I have a ton of wrong, wrong PET tape. And this was probably the hardest one. You guys, I didn't really let go of wrong, wrong PET tape. It's just amazing. The stickers are pre-cut, which in case you missed it, um, I now feel very passionate about. I've got to have the pre-cut stickers. It just works really well. It's a great quality. They're beautiful illustrations, beautiful uh, graphics on these tapes. And I just, I really, really like them. So of all the PET tapes, of all the washi tapes, these were probably uh, the ones I kept the most of, but I did reorganize them. So there's lots of different styles of the Rong Rong. Um, she has a ton of gorgeous florals. I put those all at the bottom together. Then I have her illustrations, her girls um, in a separate category. And then I have what I'm calling miscellaneous. These were like other kind of random themes that weren't just florals that had other items, but that also did not include her specific illustration, the wrong, wrong girl. So I broke it into those categories. I feel like that is going to help me find what I'm looking for in those wrong, wrong PET tapes a little bit easier. Most likely the ones I'm grabbing for the most are the ones with her illustrations. Those are by far my favorites. Then I get into the florals and the miscellaneous, but I love having them there. And I was even able to empty a few of the specialty boxes. The boxes are great, but I want to see the PET tapes. So I emptied them onto the shelf. All right, here's the hard part. Here is the bulk of what needs to happen in this space. I am up on a chair because man, I have washi tape all the way up to the ceiling. I'm going through, this is already sorted into colors. I don't wanna take it all down this time around. That feels like a lot. I'm going through, I'm just taking out the ones, again, the criteria of, am I gonna put it in a journal today? Or some of them I got rid of because I've used a lot of them. If there was only a little bit left on the, on the roll and I've used it a ton, it was time to let go. Um, I let go of some of my more unique color uh, combinations that just didn't go with very many things. Perhaps I bought them for a specific kit from Illustrated Faith or By the Well for God. Perhaps they were from the Happy Planner back in the day when I used to get the Happy Planner um, ambassador boxes or squad boxes. I did receive some washi tape that I haven't ever used. And it was just time to let those go. It's nice to clear out a little bit of space. I think we can all be really honest with ourselves. Sure, we're really good at justifying why we need supplies. But I think if you just honestly go through, you can you know what you're going to use and what you're not going to use. And it felt good to get rid of some of the things that I'm just not going to use. I'm not going to grab for them. I am in way more of a solid color washi tape era. I'm not looking for all the patterns and, and the rainbows, even though I love rainbows. I'm not looking for all of those. I'm looking for solid washi tapes more times than not with some really subtle patterns. That is the style um, that speaks to me right now. So it's okay to let go of some of the ones that maybe I loved um, a few years ago, but that are just not getting used and someone else um, will hopefully be able to use them and enjoy them. Um, whether it be my kids school, whether it be friends and family, someone else might uh, really like getting to go through these. And for me, it's just clearing out space, just having space for your supplies to breathe makes all of the difference. Next to my shelves, you're going to see those binder rings. Those are four inch binder rings that I put some of my most used washi tape on so that I can easily take off all of the sets of those. It was nice to take apart. You can see some of them are super extra full. Like that is grid washi from Planny Thing there at the bottom left. I love it, but it needs a couple binder rings now because she has been expanding her color palette and I am here for it. I would like all the grid washi. If I had to keep one, one kind of washi on a desert island, it would probably be grid washi, very closely followed by scallop washi, which you see right above that. So I'm clearing out some of the extra binder rings and putting those into the shelves and then transferring the grid washi, splitting that between. Again, I love the binder rings. That's another fabulous way to store your washi so you can easily pull it over to your workspace.
All right, here is the finished result. I did de-stash a lot of washi tape. I kept a lot of the PET tapes because those I'm loving. I actually have room to expand if need be. I certainly don't need to expand, but this works really, really well for me. And I have to come in and de-stash maybe about twice a year. Like it's, it's rough with the washi tape because it just, there's a lot of it and it's good to just take a look at it. It's a good reminder of what I actually have on hand so that it serves that purpose. And then it's just nice to kind of clear things up just a bit. So I have some of my most used washi tape from Plenty Thing and Live Love Posh on these rings so that I can grab the whole ring and bring it over to my desk. That works really well for me. And then some more specialty washi tapes up top into the rainbow of washi tape and finally into all of my PET tapes from Wrong Wrong Devo. Thank you so much for joining me today in this de-stash session. Hopefully it got your uh, creative juices flowing or at least it made you a little inspired to kind of go through Start to de-stash some of your supplies. Washi tape is one of those for me. I'm just going to have to always go through and clean it out. But it reminds me how much I love the supply. I am excited to be able to pass on washi tapes to friends and family around here. And it's nice to be able to see what is on my board a little bit more clearly these days. Um, I will link supplies down below, including these boxes and shelves, so you can check those out. If you have de-stash questions or de-stash struggles, I would love to hear about them down below. Hopefully we can find a solution as a community to kind of help you get your space organized. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I hope that all of you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative.